500 milligrams boldenone or, or Deca or something like that, and maybe 50 milligrams of Dynabol a day. But that would be a maximum like five weeks and then taper down, taper down for a few weeks and then a few weeks off. Uh, so that wasn't something taken consistently. That's like the peak that I'm telling you. Uh, Pre-conscious, 150 milligrams Trembolone. Dorian Yates is one of the biggest legends in bodybuilding. And anytime he's ever spoken out in interviews, in different videos that I've seen him do online, I never want to miss a word he has to say. And this is a new interview that I found. And he's always been open, honest, talks about everything, any questions that I've ever asked of him. He's always talked about it. But in this interview, he seems to get into more details which is why I want to share it with you guys. And it's funny because they start out by asking him, they go, Dorian, what motivates you go to go to the gym? And he goes, listen, when you see a hot girl, right? And you want to fuck her. Do you need motivation to fuck her? No. So why would you need motivation to go to the gym and fucking work out? I got no problem with motivation, man. Like, I... I is like saying, well, are you motivated to have sex? <laughs> I fucking like it, so I'm gonna do it. Uh, I don't need to be, you know, I don't need no motivation. <laughs> it's the same thing going to the gym. I fucking love it, man. Nobody needs to motivate me or tell me or, or anything. I'm self-motivated. Probably Dean's got the details last night, but only likes having sex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm not particular about which sex. Uh, uh, I'm an old school, like women type of guy. <laughs> and I found it funny because I remember as a kid, right? What was my motivation if I deeply think about it, right? My motivation was to go to the gym, right? And get bigger and stronger. It was because I wanted to become a man. And part of being a man is you have to be big and you have to be strong. So I never needed any other deeper motivation. So I always found it funny that people are always looking for motivation. Your motivation should be, I want to be a fucking man. And you don't need anything more than that. And then he talks about, you know, people try to overly complicate getting in shape and working out. And I've always agreed with this because if you look online on YouTube and he talks about this, right? You see so many people making it out to be rocket science. You need a degree in kinesiology, maybe even, to teach people how to get in shape. And it's a bunch of bullshit. It's not that hard. And it's simple, but people try to overly complicate it for two reasons. One, to sell them coaching, to be their coach, which I understand if you're doing a show, but if you're not doing a show, you don't need no coach. All the information's online. And it's not complicated as people make it out to be, which Dorian talks about. And then also, think about it, okay? You're a fitness YouTuber. You got to make it complicated because you got a lot of content to spam and put out. So you have to make it complicated to people when in reality, it's not complicated at all. It's not really that complicated. Well, I can make it sound really complicated if I wanted to charge you more money, you know? But it's, it's not my business. I don't rely on making money from coaching or personal training people. I do it because I really enjoy it and I like to see people improve. Um, and I have a lot of knowledge to share, but uh, I want to keep it simple. Because if you keep it simple and you understand it simply, uh, you can get on with it. There's just too much information out there now. And I, I feel sorry for the, the go on YouTube and watch this guy saying this and then another guy saying something else, like his head spinning, like, what, what is it? Everyone's an expert, yeah? Everyone's an expert, but they're not, you know? They're not really. Um, I am an expert. Yeah? No, I, I say it as is. You, you can debate who's the best bodybuilder. Some people might say Ronnie, probably. Some people might say whatever. It's an opinion, yeah? But I'll tell you, without any ego, there is no better trainer in the gym weight training, bodybuilding in the world than myself. 
it's, it's just the truth, yeah? It's just the truth. And I make it very simple for people to understand. It's simple, it's not fucking, it's not voodoo, yeah? You want to lose weight, you need to be in a negative calorie balance. You eat less and burn more, like, to, to a degree. And then you just monitor it every week. I'm on 4,500 4, calories, let's say. I'm losing two pound a week. Well, after a few weeks, it might slow down a little bit. We'll chip off another 300 calories. Boop, boop, boop. Just from carbs, yeah, that's the only thing. And so, come around the competition time, I'm, I'm probably under 4,000 calories, 2,800, 4,000, around about there, if I look back in my records, which is probably double what I eat now. But yeah. I was starving then, because I'm, I'm 300 pound of muscle, it's a machine, you know? Um, and just monitor it week by week. Weight scales, mirror, body fat, uh, calipers, you know, various things that you, you can monitor and keep records. And yeah, it's, I hate to see people waste time and energy. It's, it's hard enough anyway. Why make it harder for yourself by not recording everything and not getting the feedback and knowing what works and what doesn't work? Because if it doesn't work, eliminate it. Go on, forget about it. Don't ever think about it again. Yeah, make it simple. Stick with what works. And Dorian brought back memories to me because he mentioned how he learned to, about steroids when he was younger. And he learned it, he said, with the steroid handbook. And I remember America Online, for some of the people that remember America Online, there used to be these chat rooms where people would share files. And I remember as a kid, getting my hands on that cookbook and that, I said cookbook, because I remember getting my hands on that handbook and learning about all the different steroid profiles, which ones were good, which ones were bad, which ones will cause you to lose your hair, which ones wouldn't. And I remember the dosages being so low, you know, compared, and I've talked about this in the past, being so low compared to what they do now. Underground steroid handbook. It was like photocopied, stapled together thing that a guy called Dan Duchesne wrote. So there was that. Our, there was a book called Anabolic Steroids in Sports, James Wright. But that was a bit more intellectual and very conservative. And I met him and he said, well, I couldn't say too much in my book because I was working for the military at the time. So that was a bit conservative, where Dan Duchesne was a bit like crazy. So there was, a, there was just two, those two books and whatever little bits of stuff you could pick up in the magazines. Apart from that, it's word of mouth, yeah? Like, what's this guy doing? What's that, you know? Uh, that's how we learned at the time. And uh, I would say the dosages were lower because, you'd, you know, you'd ask, what does this guy, what, and, and the accepted level uh, of what was being used then was probably less. And I think we were more like, shit, you better not take so much Dynabol because it could damage your liver and, and all this stuff. And we were more cautious then. We, we thought steroids were potentially more dangerous than, than maybe they are. I mean, of course, if you abuse, 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 anything is going to damage you. Um, so that's how we got the information. It's just the way that I did things. But there's no, like, no studies in this. There's no accepted way. Uh, you know, it's more or less people that have been experimenting over the last, what, 60 years or so. I mean, the Mr. Olympia started in 1965, right? There is no Mr. Olympia winner that was not taking steroids. Even 1965, Larry Scott's on record, probably taking very little, 20, 30 milligrams of D-ball a day. That's, that's all they were using back then, but they were, they were using, you know? Um, so it's this people, you know, trying it and uh, experimenting. And I, I was actually having a blood test with my doctor to, two or three times a year, which nobody else was doing. And I know why, because when I first went to my doctor and I said, I'm going to, I'm taking steroids. I just want to do my blood test and everything to make sure I'm all right. And it's like very negative and really didn't want to do it till he saw me on TV at the World Games. And he's like, ah, you're, you're doing this for a serious thing. I was like, yeah, man, that's what I was trying to tell you. And he's like, okay, come and see me. And But it's very, very basic. Um, all right, so off season, I just use probably like, I want to use testosterone, DECA or um, Equipoise, Boldenone it was called. It's a bit like DECA, mid-range anabolic. 
uh, Andibo or Andro. I've been on TRT for over 10 years and it's done so much for my life to make me feel younger, stronger at 45 years old. And I recently signed with a company called Live Forever Health. I'm going to put a link in my coupon code in the bio. And this company, you know, everything's been so seamless, you know, and I tested this out. You know, I would never recommend things to people unless I'm using it, unless I tested the whole process. And the process couldn't be easier. They sent me a kit to send my blood back in the mail. Uh, they got my results. We went, I met with the doctor, with the nurse practitioner. We went over my results. And then they gave me my prescription, sent me the testosterone in the mail. So it couldn't be easier. And again, this is a company I trust that I actually did the whole process with. And pricing is competitive, similar to everybody else who does it. But this is a company that I use and a company, again, that I trust. Whereas for Concest, I tried to stick to non-aromatizing. So like testosterone and some D-ball, stuff like that. Aromatization is like you're putting this male hormone in your body, so it's going up here, where female hormone estrogen is quite similar. So the body just converts that excess testosterone into estrogen, which can cause you to hold water and you'll be a bit puffy and all that stuff, but it didn't really matter in the off season because you're there to lift heavy weights. Uh, pre contest I would go to compounds that don't aromatize, i.e. they didn't convert to estrogen, which was going to then retain water and maybe blow your conditioning. And I want you guys to hear when he talks about Trembolone, because you guys know Trembolone is considered like the ultimate steroid, the one that's going to get you bigger than ever. But the thing is, people don't realize how dangerous it is to use. And, you know, kids nowadays, they're on TikTok doing 30-day trend challenges. Kids have no business doing this shit, right? And he talks about how back then it used to come in 76 milligrams, and that's how you knew it was real because it came from the pharmacies. And he sees what people are doing now, and he can't believe they're doing as much as they say they're doing. Uh, so I, for contests, I always use um, uh, Parabolon, which is Trembolone. And I'm, I'm shocked now with like how much Trembolone people use. Because we were told back then just by, you know, the guys that used to distribute it. Parabolon, 76 milligrams. There's a reason it's 76 milligrams and not 200 or three, like other compounds because it's very powerful, yeah? And don't use too much of this because it's harsh on your system. It, it could be harsh on your kidneys. I don't know where that information came from, but that was just what we heard, yeah? So... Um, on average, I take two of those a week. So 76, it's 152 milligrams, Trembolone. That's it. You don't need more than that, yeah? I hear people use six, 800 milligrams of Trembolone. First of all, is it real? If it is, you're going to have trouble. Uh, that's too much, yeah? So uh, Trembolone, Brumabolin, which is also hard to get. Don't forget, in the 80s and 90s, there's no underground steroids. There is none. It's all pharmaceutical and you can get it. And it's, you know, so if you got 76 milligram, you know it's 76 milligram. If it's 250 milligram sustenance, you know it's 250 milligrams. Now, it could be good, it could be not. Who, who knows? So, Primabolin, Parabolon, uh, Anavar, and uh, when I was a pro, got to that level of growth hormone as well. As an amateur, I didn't use that, wasn't even available. Um, so there, that's it. Dosages, uh, off season, I'd probably use more. So maybe like up to a thousand milligrams of testosterone, five hundred milligrams boldenone or or Deca or something like that, and maybe fifty milligrams of Dynabol a day. But that'd be a maximum like five weeks, and then taper down, taper down for a few weeks, and then a few weeks off. Uh, so that wasn't something taken consistently. That's like the peak that I'm telling you. Uh, pre conscious 150 milligrams Trembolone, maybe 500 milligrams of Primavolin Depot, uh, a little bit of test propionate, maybe 300 milligrams. Anavar was doing like 50 milligrams a day. Uh, you know, that's it. Probably not massive to what people use these days, but that was, I would say, just average of what a pro would be using, pretty much talking to other guys and, you know, stuff like that. So again, Dorian always puts out 
the greatest interviews. If you guys want to watch the full one, I'll put the link in the description. And uh, again, like I said in the beginning, anytime Dorian speaks, he's somebody you want to hear every word he said because there's always something that you can learn from him. Picking year long. From England, Dorian Yates. The first presentation in check of 100,000.